everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your AEW Revolution 2022 full show review and results for you guys. Of course, we're going to be running through the entire show, breaking down all of the action, letting you guys know exactly what took place, and letting you guys know all of my thoughts, opinions, where we may go, all of those different things as we progress through this show. I will cover every matchup, explain the things that I like, the things I don't like, and all of those different things, man. Pretty excited for this show. I thought the card was pretty insane. I liked all the different things that we got. And AEW is just so hot right now, man. It makes me really excited as a wrestling fan. It's just so nice to watch. It's a breath of fresh air every single time I tune in. Collecting the figures, watching the shows, it's just amazing. I really do love it to death. Would this show live up to the hype, man? Would it be insanely great? Would it be insanely shitty? Or would it be somewhere in between, man? We're gonna find all those things out as we dive into AEW Revolution 2022. Take a look at it and hopefully it lives up to all the hype, man. With all those things being said, let's dive into this show and find out what it was all about. So starting off with the pre-show, man, there were three matches on the pre-show, but I did not cover it or the buy-in show, whatever you want to call it. We had Layla Hirsch. She defeated Chris Statlander by pinfall. I thought that was a pretty interesting decision right there. Hook defeated QT Marshall by submission. It's like five minutes. You know, they're slowly building up Hook, which I thought was pretty cool to see him on the buy-in right there. And then this matchup right here, House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews taking on Pac, Penta, and Eric Redbeard, formerly known as Eric Rowan. And this matchup was super fire. I mean, we knew it would be. It was very, very fun. All kinds of spots all over the place. Very high energy. Just what an energetic match. You guys know the tag team wrestling in AEW is over the top, and this one delivered. I loved all the gears we got on this in this matchup. House of Black looks sick as hell in all their matte and like shiny black attires. Buddy looked incredible. Malachi looked incredible. This thing almost went 20 minutes, and it was just a freaking, just a barn burner. But House of Black did get the win. I figured that would be the case, but damn, what a great matchup, and it was very exciting to see. I loved it. House of Black with the dub, as I, I believe they should, man. It was, it was nice, and they're slowly building up Malachi, and I think this is the way to go. Very enjoyable. All right, guys, so our main show opened up with Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston. This matchup was very solid. You know, I expected this outcome. You know, we'll get into all the different things, but this was very enjoyable. I thought, I saw some people on Twitter saying this was Jericho's best match in AEW so far. I don't know if I would go that far, but it was a very enjoyable match. They went almost 15 minutes or so. It was very hard hitting. You know, a lot of like near falls. It was very intense. I'd say it was definitely Eddie Kingston's best match, I'd say. Was it Jericho's best match? I don't know, but it was a very fun, very fun filled match. Very hard hitting, very physical, and Eddie Kingston would get the win by submission over Jericho after the matchup. Jericho would not shake hands with Eddie. This one was very personal coming in. They lived up to it. I thought it was very enjoyable throughout. And Eddie Kingston gets the big dub. I think this does a lot for him in his AEW career. We'll see where it goes. But Eddie Kingston does pick up the victory over Jericho. I expected this. I didn't do a predictions video, but this was my prediction. Next up, guys, was our three-way tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. This was probably the match that I was probably the most looking forward to. You had some other matches that I was looking forward to a lot. But this this one I just knew was going to slap all of the titties in the world. You know what I'm saying? So, Young Bucks, Jurassic Express, and Red Dragon going to war here. Holy hell. You have six fantastic combatants. The chemistry was off the chain. The high-flying maneuvers. I, I just loved this match, man. It was just wonderful. It was truly beautiful. Just the way that these teams interacted. The sequences. The way that the match evolved. The storytelling that we got throughout. Featuring two of my favorite tag teams in the world in Jurassic Express and the Young Bucks, man. This was just so fun. I was super glad to see you know, just to have Jurassic Express win the championships and then to get this big time three-way versus Young Bucks and, you know, two of the top teams in the world in, you know, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and then Matt and Nick Jackson to come out on top in this matchup, which they did. It was just insane, man. Just a really fun matchup again, like I said. Jurassic Express does retain the championships. For some reason, man, I thought for sure that the Young Bucks were going to win. I don't know what it was. It was just a feeling I had. Like, I was thinking in my head that somehow Omega and Adam Cole would come to blows and that would kind of bring your Young Bucks and Red Dragon and storyline together, but that is, you know, I thought that they'd capture the championships, but I guess this can do without the titles. You don't necessarily need it, but a fun matchup, one that I would absolutely say go back and watch if you missed it. Definitely go check out the highlights of this match. What a beauty. What a greatness. Tag Team Wrestling is the best when it is treated this way, and I love AEW for that. One of my favorite things about AEW is the tag team division, and this is a great staple for that. Just precedent right there, man. Beautiful stuff. Next up, guys, was the face of the Revolution ladder match for a future TNT champion championship matchup. Wardlow, Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, and Christian Cage. Very fun matchup right here, man. Had a ton of fun with it. Had some great names in here. Had some big guys, you know, big guys filling up the ladder match, which I appreciated. Just a really, really fun matchup right here, man. Great spots throughout. I thought Cassidy played a wonderful role in this. You guys know 
though he is in the Money in the Bank coming up at one of my pick bed shows. So I was excited to see what spots they pulled out. I was worried they were going to steal some of my spots. They actually did it though. So this was, uh, this was just greatly executed. I liked all the things throughout. Wardlow looked like a monster and we build towards his future some more guys because he ends up winning the ladder match. I thought that Orange Cassidy, that one spot where Wardlow and Keith Lee had the ladder and then he like, it was between Orange Cassidy's head, you know, it was like between the ladder rungs and then he did like a flip onto the top of the ladder and then almost reached the ring. I thought that was brilliant. Really greatly executed. Powerhouse Hobbs looked like a monster as well. Just a really great match, man. One of those ladder matches that, you know, you're going to remember for a little bit there. And as always, oh, I almost forgot Danhausen made an appearance in this matchup, which I didn't really like because it didn't lead to anything, right? Like Ricky Starks was up there and then he interrupted Ricky Starks, gets, you know, goes away, which I love Danhausen. I think he's fantastic. I think he has a great role in AEW and everything, all of his work. I, lo I love him, but I didn't like how he takes out Ricky Starks and then Wardlow gets on the ladder and then Ricky Starks gets right back up. So it didn't really lead to anything. It didn't really cost Ricky Starks because he got right back in the match there. So I don't know how they're going to justify that. It was odd, but Wardlow wins and I'm glad for it. I thought that was great. It was, it was the perfect winner. It's who I thought was going to win. I predicted it and you know, they've just slowly been building him up. I've become a really big fan of the guy. I love his body language, his expressions, and we're going to see that later on in the show. And he just, he's just so good. He's actually really good at what he does. He's a young up and comer. He's big. He, he's reminding me a lot of like 0405 Batista right now is the vibes that I'm getting. And I'm here for every second of it. Wardlow wins in a, in a great match. Next up, guys, was our TBS Championship match between Jade Cargill taking on Tecanti. And this was very brief. You know, Jade Cargill has, has just been dominant as she should, right? She's jacked. She looks like a million bucks. And Tecanti's getting better. Both these women getting better and better every single match. But Jade Cargill proves once again that, she, that nobody's a match for her. To start the matchup off, you know, they did kiss in the middle of the ring. Got the one up there for Jade. And I did miss some of this matchup because I was trying to catch up on my filming. But it still told the story that we wanted to see, right? They're slowly building up Jade little by little. I think that Tay again is getting really good and she's becoming one of those top performers in the women's division But I think Jade right now is just on another level I think Jade and Britt are at the very top and then everybody else kind of falls where they may and Jade just continues to dominate here As she should she gets the win Tay Conti did put up a fight for a little bit there But at the end of the day Jade does capture and retain the matchup and the championship Next up, guys, was our dog collar match between MJF and CM Punk. A bitter rivalry coming in right here, man. A matchup we knew we would get a lot of blood out of, and I can actually confirm that the next Blood and Guts 2-pack or a upcoming Blood and Guts 2-pack will be MJF with CM Punk in these gears with bloody accessories and dog collar accessories from Jeremy Padauri. Confirmed it on Twitter. But this match was a bloody freaking mess, man. What a fun matchup. I had a lot of fun with this one. It was just so brutal. Very bloody. I love CM Punk's call to Ring of Honor. I loved his old get up and theme. Just wonderful, man. This is why we love AEW. These are just these moments that you're just not going to see in WWE. You know, it's it's kind of like you're not going to get this edge. You're not going to get the blood. You're not going to get the guts. You're not going to get that edge that the product used to have. And I get it with all the sponsorships and stuff, man, but it really hurts their product. It really, really does. If you never experienced WWE in its true form back then, man, it's really hard to, you know, it, like I can understand why you wouldn't care about it now and like why you wouldn't care for blood and stuff like that but man it just really adds legitimacy it really adds passion to the product it, it just makes you feel a certain type of way and this matchup is one of those man just one of those beautifully built up rivalries that culminated here CM Punk and MJF beat the hell out of each other we had thumbtacks dog collar chains guys going back and forth it was just a brutal matchup to watch and at the end we actually got the man Wardlow coming out and Wardlow comes out and uh, or MJF basically is like crying right he's crying and he's He's like, Wardlow, Wardlow. And Wardlow comes out there and he's like, give me my damn ring because he's got the upper hand. He's ready to put CM Punk away. Wardlow's reaching in his pockets looking for the ring. He cannot find the ring. And then MJF turns around, takes a GTS. Wardlow then goes back in his pocket and is like, oops, I did find the ring. Puts the ring on the apron. CM Punk crawls and gets it. Lays out MJF for the one, two, three. The crowd popped hella hard. I love, I, I, I popped hella hard. I thought that the body language and the facial expressions from Wardlow were beautiful. Really just enjoying his work right now, man. Just They've done a great job of building him up. I'm here for it all day. Whether this was a full-blown turn or not, we're going to find out very soon. I'm guessing that MJF and Wardlow are going to come to blows real soon, but holy hell, this was so fun, man. It just was so fun. It was so fun, and it was a great matchup, man. It, it was just so hard-hitting. The blood was fantastic. One of those that I will definitely go back and be watching, but I think this was a staple moment in AEW history, and you got to go back and check this one out if you guys missed it. But CM 
Punk does get his W back over MJF, and I'm sure we're still not done with this feud completely. Next up, man, was our AEW Women's Championship match. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, taking on Thunder Rosa, and holy hell, this matchup was incredible, man. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I mean by incredible exactly, but Thunder Rosa took a shish ton of damage. There were so many times in this matchup where I thought it was over. It was hard hitting. I like the way these guys intertwined. I thought that their chemistry was really good. Thunder Rosa, I thought she was done for like six times in this match. I thought Brett Baker was done like six times in this match, but Thunder Rosa put on a clinic even though she did take the L. Great shenanigans in this thing. Thunder Rosa looked like a beast though, man. That spear to the outside, I think it was on Jamie Hayter. Holy hell. Good lord, what a spear. And then she clotheslined the hell out of the other girl. Just what a, what a sequence, man. But she took a curb stomp on the championship and still managed to kick out. I thought that was unbelievable. I thought Britt was going to tap a few times, or I guess she did tap. It was just behind the ref's back, but this story is not over for sure, but the new women's AEW championship is gorgeous. Oh my god, what a way better looking belt than this right here, man. It was a great transition. It was a, it, it, it looks similar to the men's, right, but it's its own thing, which I think WWE is lacking. It's literally a carbon copy. This is its own deal while also being big and representative of the, the championship and AEW, so I thought that the new championship looks way better than the last one. I think it's a beautiful championship, and I, I like it a lot, and I like it a hell of a lot more than the last one, but Britt Baker does retain. I don't think it's over, but this matchup did, was enjoyable for me, for me. And the crowd was much more alive for this than other matches. Next up, man, was a brutal matchup. A singles match between John Moxley and Brian Danielson. Holy hell. These guys went over 20 minutes. It was so physical. I mean, what do you expect out of Mox and Brian Danielson, right? I mean, these guys beat the holy hell out of each other. I know I've said that quite a bit tonight, but this, this was literally one of those times where guys beat the hell out of each other. When I tell you, guys were just, I mean, I, this was borderline almost bloodier than CM Punk and MJF. They beat the hell out of each other. Brian Danielson was in the driver's seat majority of the match it was super brawler. If you guys like physical matches and brawling, this was the matchup for you. Just one of those classic style matches, and it looked like Brian Danielson was putting on a wrestling clinic in the ring, and Mox couldn't quite overpower him, and Brian Danielson had him on the ropes. He was about to make Mox tap out, but then Mox rolls him over, gets the one, two, three. Very surprising. It was so fast, I almost missed it, and basically, Brian Danielson gets pissed off. He's slapping around Moxley. He's beating on him. He's pushing the referee. Out comes William Regal, so William William Regal has signed with AEW. I could have swore. Like, I didn't pop that hard. Like, I did pop hard. I was like, oh my god, William Regal's out here. I thought he was about to freaking bring out War Games. thought we were about to have a War Games match in the middle of it. I thought he was going to settle this thing with a War Games match. But these guys were beating the hell out of each other. Out comes William Regal, like I said. And I thought William Regal had already signed with AEW. I thought that was already a well-known thing. Maybe it was like a report that may be true and this just confirmed it, maybe. But they end up shaking hands and I don't know if it's going to be a tag team with William Regal as their manager. I I think that would be insane, but I don't know what's next, a tag team or just a settlement or I don't know. I guess we'll see what's next, but this was very intriguing and I love the way this developed. Fantastic match and I, I didn't really, I don't know, I guess the finish called for it, but I think Mox did earn the respect of Danielson after he kicked the shit out of him. Next up guys was our six man tornado tag team match between Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, and Sting taking on Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy of Private Party and holy hell, this matchup was clinically insane same from start to finish, man. Before the bell even rang, they were beating the hell out of each other. I mean, we had weapons all over the place, just fast pace action. If you guys like car crashes, this is the one for you. It reminded me of like an old school Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys, Edge and Christian style matchup, man, where they were just all flying all over the place, spot after spot, just epicness to a T, man. Just one of those matches, man. It just hits you right in the feels, just, just a clinic. A crazy ass matchup clinic is what I would call it, because these guys were all over the arena. Isaiah Cassidy took a very I mean, we could just run through some of the spots. A Spanish fly off the stage with Isaiah Cassidy and Sammy Guevara through two tables. Isaiah Cassidy, I think, got a concussion from it. Hopefully, he's okay. It scared the hell out of me a little bit. He wasn't moving for a second. Kind of scared me, but it seemed like he was okay as far as I'm concerned. I was worried he hurt his neck as well, but it looks like I, I think it was just like a concussion, like he may have hit his head, but I didn't like the way that kind of like got brought upon because Sammy Guevara just like traded shots with him, and then he was like, I'm crazy, mother effer, or whatever he said, and then he 
and just did it. I didn't like that because it just, like, I understand you're trying to get spots out and stuff, but you gotta meet me halfway. It's gotta be somewhat believable where you can damage the opponent enough to pull off the spot, but, you know, it's just a little minor critique there. Sting jumped off the balcony through, like, six tables on Andrade. Andrade took a hellacious beating. Reminded me of what, like, Money in the Bank 2018, 2019, where him and Finn Balor were in there taking every damn bump. That's what this reminded me of, but what a fun matchup. Fighting in the crowd, just guys all over the place. I love Darby's paint. I love Sting's paint. Guys were just flying all over the place. I borderline thought we were going to get Jeff Hardy in this matchup. I guess it wasn't meant to be, but Darby Allen hits the coffin drop on Matt Hardy. Not fully connecting, but it did hit enough there. One, two, three. Sting, Darby, and Sammy get the win. As I predicted here, I think this will be the final nail in the coffin for Matt Hardy and his goons, and we will get Jeff Hardy coming in and breaking off into the Hardy boys as we get into that, but what a hellacious match. Very fun and enjoyable matchup. I enjoyed every second of it. Just, just right from the jump, man. That's the kind of matches I love to see, and this is why I love AEW, man. You're just not going to see that in WWE, so it was just gorgeous, man. What a fun match, and hats off to everybody involved, and I hope Isaiah Cassidy makes a full recovery very soon and quickly, and hopefully it's not as bad as it did look. And for the main event, the AEW World Championship on the line. Hangman Adam Page taking on Adam Cole. Very funny stuff going on in the crowd for this one. You know, let's go Adam. Adam sucks. You had, you know, if Adam wins, we riot signs. It was just a bunch of, you know, just downplaying on the Adam names of both talents here. But, I mean, it just goes without saying, man. Like, Adam Cole, I've said this so many times in, in on record, in videos, tweeting. I've said it so many times, even on podcasts before. Adam Cole is a top five wrestler in the world bar none not even the man doesn't even have the ability to have a bad match i don't think i've ever seen a bad adam cole match now i'm not saying every match is perfect but i am on the edge of my seat i'm engaged i'm right there with every adam cole match and this was no different this man is so damn good at everything he does his timing his precision his creativity his facial expressions his body language the dude is just the best of the best man i love this guy one of my favorite wrestlers in the world not even close what a baller what a match this one was insane this was everything you wanted it to be you had drama you had suspense you had crazy spots you had shenanigans you had near falls you had both finishers holy hell man what a match thing was just thoroughly enjoyable man if you guys missed this match you must go back and watch it you have to go back and watch it i think this had to be five stars i think it was five stars it was five stars to me i mean i was just it, from start to finish i was clung to the edge of my seat you had had interferences from Red Dragon and Dark Order. I I don't know why I expected to see the Bucks of Youth in here. We didn't get any Bucks of Youth in here, but I mean, it just goes without saying, man. These two men put it all on the line, and, and Adam Page just shows again why he's a world champion. He was unbelievable in this match, too. I'm, get, I'm not giving all the credit to Adam Cole, but Adam Cole just proves it once again, man. Every single opponent that he faces looks like a million bucks, and I know that Page is obviously very, very good in his own right, but I just had to get that off my chest about Adam Cole, man. Always delivered always on time and it's just it has to go without saying but hangman does retain after just a, a, like just so many different maneuvers he puts away adam cole last shot lariat everything man he had to throw everything at adam cole even his own finisher beautiful way to close the show i mean i can't really say anything else man you just have to go back and watch the magic unfold but this whole show kicked all the ass man i i really every single matchup even if you go back to the the buy-in show every single match was just damn good man and every single match... I think I liked maybe outside of Jade's match, but every match had moments in it where I was just like, damn, this is good. Damn, this is good. Maybe Layla and Chris Statlander's match was, eh, you know, Hook defeating QD Marshall wasn't anything, but it kind of adds to a story there and kind of building, but damn, every other match was just such a slap. It wasn't like, oh, we'll just get this over with because we can wrestle again on TV, man. They Everybody put their all into this show, and it totally showed, and it was just beautiful, man. What a beautiful piece. This is one of those shows that you watch where you're just like, I just love wrestling, you know? I just love AEW. I love wrestling, and it makes me so excited to watch the product. That's what they do for me, man. I love this start to finish. Fantastic show. Fantastic main event. Hangman Studio Champion. I guess we will see what comes next, but holy hell, I loved it, man. Huge shout out to Adam Cole again, man, but that is going to wrap up AEW Revolution 2022. Ton of fun with this show. Ton of fun with everything that took place. I loved every single second of it, and you guys got to check out highlights. You got to go back and watch it. I'd say go watch the full show, but who am I? You know? Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts on AEW revolution down below did you like it did you hate it was it amazing let me know all those things down below man and i'll see you guys in the next video subscribe to the channel and don't cross the line like i don't know who crossed the line i get uh, sammy guevara just bailing off the damn set jesus christ you crossed the line